Fantastic. Well, welcome everybody. Um, we're very excited to uh, be presenting this in conjunction with our friends at uh, uh, HL Flake. The, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about our speed phase series with body temperature and mass detection, um, how that impacts um, our success in, in this area. And also we're going to talk about some of the uh, noise or confusion uh, in this body temperature and mass detection area that anybody who's been investigating it or doing research is seeing right now. So we're going to dive in right now. Uh, Esteban, next slide, please. So ZK Teco uh, brings you the most comprehensive access control and entry control product line in the marketplace. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, here, here's the deal. We, for the last 20 years, have been manufacturing biometrics and card-based access control solutions um, and terminals. Uh, today, to date, we have uh, multiple access control solutions um, with, ac with card access and pin access, as well as fingerprint. We're the only company in the marketplace that we're aware of that actually does fingerprint identification on the panel, which means that, that you can have less expensive readers in the um, atriums or at the office doors, et cetera. And not only are they less expensive, but they're less bulky, which uh, in many cases uh, customers prefer. We also manufacture um, card readers and have HID compatible card readers. We have a whole variety of biometrics that I mentioned we've been doing for over 20 years, um, including face, fingerprint, palm, uh, finger vein, and now even body temperature. We're also, we also do uh, long range readers and a variety of those for entry gates and garages and a whole variety of other uh, reasons. We do turnstiles from the traditional tripod and all the way through the uh, big full height ones you might see at a subway or a factory through the very fancy ones that you might see in the entry of a Fortune 25 or Fortune 50 corporate office. Uh, then we do metal detectors, walkthrough style. Uh, this one here, you see the guard with it folded down on a cart that's all comprised as one unit. Um, an individual can set that up or take that down in probably about five minutes by themselves. It has a 40 hour battery life. And that's just one of the metal detectors we have. We'll also uh, briefly talk about at some point, one of our newest metal detector um, entries to the line, which incorporates a uh, temperature detection capability. And then finally, in our line of products, we have a variety of x-ray um, inspection scanners for parcels and packages. So nice thing is, it's a one-stop shop. You point your finger at ZK if there's any questions. Um, and we're here to support you on all that, as are the team at uh, HL Flake. So we're very proud of that. We have three um, manufacturing centers around the around the world, excuse me, in Thailand, India, and China. We are one of 32 global offices as we're part of a multinational organization. Uh, we are one of those offices with our new location in Atlanta, Georgia. We'll show you that office in a minute. We have 14 R&D centers around the world, including uh, one in Silicon Valley that does our newest fingerprint technology. And we have 140 global service outlets. We're used in over 180 countries around the world. So the one thing you can be sure of is when you are looking for a manufacturer of this type of technology, ZK Teco is well established, here to stay, and will be here to support you tomorrow. Next slide, please. So here's some of my colleagues in our Atlanta facility, actually Alpharetta, Georgia, just north of uh, Atlanta, I believe that's, is that correct, Esteban, just north? That's correct. And um, the next slide here is gonna show our new, the new office, or excuse me, I apologize, I'm wrong. The next slide here is our 
um, 32 national uh, MRs or manufacturer rep firms that are represented here uh, across North America. Next slide, please. Here's a picture of that new corporate office. And we'll see the inside here rendering. Um, in the, the closest to me here, closest to you, you see this uh, area, and that is our experience center that's being uh, finalized right now. In our experience center, next slide, please. You will see a whole variety of our technology, um, including our turnstiles and metal detectors, our kiosks, uh, the, the history of biometrics, along with the history of our company and other great solutions. So why are we here today? Well, we're here to talk about uh, body temperature and mass detection. And next slide. So before today, when Travis, uh, Travis and uh, Esteban and Brent and I'd be talking with some of you guys, we'd be talking about fire suppression or biometrics, NVRs, cameras, panels, all of that stuff. But you know what, today, nobody cares. What does everybody care about? Reopening America. What does that mean? Does it mean when the governor of your state says, oh, everything's open, that people are gonna come rushing back to the stores? That employees are gonna be comfortable going back to work? No, in fact, the federal government has said that people can't get penalized if they're afraid to come back to work. So next slide, please. So this is all about reinstilling confidence. The, uh, the president um, talks about reopening America again. We're hearing about COVID in the news everywhere we turn. There's, um, there's daily briefings. There's all kinds of data coming out. There's also all kinds of misinformation coming out. Um, it's really important to realize that the, per the company behind what you're purchasing when, it's, when you talk about technology is gonna be there to stay. And in this case, it's no different. There's many of our competitors that are jumping on the bandwagon, um, throwing stuff together and saying it is a, a device for measuring body temperature. You need to be very careful there that they actually know what they're talking about, that are they the manufacturer of the device? I heard a story the other day an integrator is, was buying a system from a competitor where they had to pay 50% up front with a four to eight week delivery time. What does that tell you? That tells you they're building the devices on, the comp, on that individual's dollar and not until they get the money. So they have no production, they have no inventory, they probably have no tech support in the United States, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So just be careful at what you're looking at. Make sure you can talk to somebody um, and, and you can get a confidence level. So with that said, what is this all about? Reinstilling confidence. Well, the employees need to have confidence that the employee standing next to them or working next to them doesn't have a blazing fever, doesn't have an infection, but they can't make sure they don't have an infection. The World Health Organization, the CDC, the AMA and other organizations have come out and said, the only way we really can tell and identify if somebody has a virus is to see if they have an elevated body temperature or a fever. Um, so here you have an individual with presenting with a fever. I don't know about your company, but in many companies, it wasn't po written policy, but it sure was a doctrine that if you had a fever, you were told, suck it up, come to work and get your job done. Well, that, that's all changing. That won't be the case anymore. Nobody wants to stand next to somebody or be served by somebody or work with somebody or eat next to somebody who potentially has a blazing fever. Next slide, please. So there's multiple ways to do this. 
one way that many of our competitors are touting is um, doing this with a surveillance style. Surveillance style means you take a thermal camera, not a regular IP camera, but a thermal IP camera, and a black body. A black body is a device that helps to identify and regulate the temperature or understand what the temperature is, excuse me, and share that data with that thermal camera so that when you pass that, th that black body, it then does calculations between where you're at, the location of the thermal camera, and the temperature it's getting to somehow mathematically identify what it believes your body temperature to be. Then you need a video recorder or NVR. You have to have facial recognition software and thermal software and more monitoring staff and more staff to go out in, into the, the area and, and grab those individuals should they actually have a elevated body temperature. So this is a very costly proposition. It's not a very pleasant experience for an individual who may have walked in and has an elevated body temperature. Next slide, please. Excuse me. Okay, so let's assume we're at a ballpark or a shopping mall or a grocery store or whatever it may be, and they're using surveillance body temperature. Well, what does that mean? That means they're gonna scan the crowd whether it's at the entrance or at the concession counter area or in the stands, whatever it may be. And they're gonna identify people who potentially have fevers or elevated body temperatures. Well, here is a, a depiction here. It's supposed to be humorous. I hope you take it that way. But here we have the man in yellow, who's a security guard. He was dispatch, dispatched to go and find this gentleman here. He finds him, the guy starts running, and he has to tackle him on the field to, to talk to him and share the standard operating procedure that that company has. Um, this is not very pretty. It's not very elegant. It's, um, just, it's just not. So, so now we go ahead and we talk about the next possible option moving forward. So this is what we propose. We propose using it, using entry control or access control as the way in which we use body temperature or identify body temperature. So the individual walks up to a reader of ours, whether it's attached to a turnstile or maybe a metal detector or freestanding or part of the access control system. Um, you have a variety of different ways to do that. But the goal is the person walks up, they look at the reader. Maybe it's gonna do facial recognition, maybe it's not. Maybe they're gonna swipe their card and then it's gonna know who they are. Or maybe they're just some random patron coming in. In any case, they're gonna look at this device and it's going to tell them if they have an elevated body temperature. If they have an elevated body temperature, there's going to be a standard operating procedure that that business is then going to deal with to um, notify that individual of what they need them to do. Uh, with respect to masks, it'll be the same thing. If they require masks in their facility, whether it's a um, order from the governor or the president or just that company's philosophy and policy, uh, that the the people working there can then deal with that and explain that. So this is what we're gonna get into. This is what we're gonna take a look at. And uh, again, thank you for joining us, those who have joined late. Uh, next slide, please. So this video here um, depicts a woman walking up. She has her mask on, she doesn't have a fever and she's recognized, so she's allowed to enter. This woman here is using her palm for identity Notification. She has her mask on, does not have an elevated body temperature, and she's free to go. This woman here is identified. She does not have an elevated body temperature, but she doesn't have a mask. This woman here has an elevated body temperature. She's recognized and is wearing a mask, but she's still not allowed access. OK, 
Okay, so these are our readers. Uh, we're going to get into those more in detail in a couple of minutes. So I'm just going to go past this slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so the SF1008 Plus, um, this sprite here is a patent pending device. It is based on our flagship solution, which is, um, <clears throat> which was the SF1008WP. Um, many of you know of the, SF, the SF1008WP as a waterproof device. That is true, but once we add the plus and the body temperature and mass detection, we do eliminate the ability for being a waterproof outside device. This is an interior device. Um, patent pending, as I said, it's ideal for access control and time and attendance. It has an eight inch display. It supports up to 50,000 faces enrolled in it, as well as 5,000 palms. It has a body temperature detection capability, mass detection capability. It operates in complete darkness and total sunlight. Uh, it has TCPIP, Wigan in and out, RS-485, and Wi-Fi. It uses visible light camera for speed and remote facial, um, facial enrollment, as well as an infrared camera for accuracy. Has very powerful anti-spoofing capabilities. It includes um, a relay. It includes an ac uh, request access capability uh, and other uh, features. As it is in itself a standalone access control panel. Next slide, please. Okay. So now my colleague Esteban is going to give us a webinar, or excuse me, give us a walkthrough of the SF-1008. And um, please start to ask your questions in the Q&A area. Uh, and we will start to get to those uh, after the live presentation. Thank you again. That's the bottom. Right. Take it thank away. you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. And thank you to uh, the boys over at HL Flake for having us this afternoon. So. Here is the reader that we've been uh, presenting. Uh, this is the SF1008 Plus. And as Neil mentioned, it's our next generation of our Speedface series of readers. Our previous generation, this reader itself, the SF1008, was an outdoor waterproof IP68 IKO4 vandal resistant reader. Uh, but now the next version is we simply just added a temperature module to it. And with that, it has become it has negated that. So this is an indoor unit like Neil had referenced. So this on its own is its own access control device. Uh, so it has your weakened input, your weakened output, your normal open, normal closed lock outputs, your Rex and auxiliary inputs as well, and also an alarm output as well as your RJ45 for Ethernet connection. Back to our software. So this reader has the capability of doing facial recognition, palm verification, uh, password or PIN, card via weakened input, as well as body temperature and mass detection. The way I have, current, I have it currently set up is for a threshold of 100.4 degrees. So anything above that would alarm it. Anything below that would grant access. So I'll demonstrate that right now. I'll come up. Please adjust your position for normal temperature. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see, it verified my face. My temperature was below that threshold, so it granted me access. And by doing that, it opened the lock output, and also which, which I've wired to a green LED. And that came to uh, the behest of a lot of different um, integrators who were, were excited that it could do access control, but were more worried about people getting people back to work now, and that they would worry about the access control portion later. Right now, they just wanted to know if someone coming in as a high temperature, or if not, and then if they could get some type of visual verification. So we so we did this with the um, lock output. We just wired a green LED, and then with our alarm output, we wired a red LED, red LED. So this is a solution that basically any customer can use. Uh, it's just simply just purchasing the small LEDs and wiring them. So now we saw me recognize with my face. So now I'll do the same thing with my palm. 
Okay, so as you saw, I verified with my palm. It has to measure my temperature. And based on that, I was below the threshold, so it granted me access and opened the lock output. So now let's take a look and see what would happen if I came in with a temperature above that. So I'm going to set my threshold down to 95. I'll present that to the reader. And they said that even though it verified my face and it sees my user ID, it denies me access because my, my temperature is above that threshold. So now let's go through a couple more options on this reader. So at any point, you're able to disable or enable your temperature screening or your mass detection. So if there ever comes a time where this whole craze of temperature uh, needing to take body temperatures goes away or every, anyone's not interested anymore, by simply turning that off, it turns right back into our SF1008. And it's still a highly accurate facial recognition reader as well as palm verification. It still does all the other functions, minus just minus the temperature and the mass detection. So without the temperature mass detection it enabled, the speed of this reader is quite uh, amazing. So as you can see, just like that, I was able to verify. Uh, and the distance that this can pick me up without the temperature is up to almost about 8 to 10 feet. So you don't even need, even need to be constantly looking. You don't need to stop and present yourself there. If you're carrying a box or something like that, you can easily just poke your head in and keep on walking. But what I'll do now is we'll get back into the temperature because that's what everybody is interested in. So like I showed you, at any time you can turn that on or off. You can manually set your, your threshold. So I'll put this back up to 100.4. Then you can still have a decision here to be made whether you want to deny access based on a high temperature. If you still want to give someone access, you can. Uh, we also have our temperature units. So we have Fahrenheit and Celsius if you have any international uh, opportunities. We have our temperature measurement distance, which is set to FAR. And with FAR, you can have an accurate temperature reading from up to 18 inches away. So that's usually what I recommend as the optimal uh, distance for it. That way, someone doesn't have to get right up to the reader. Uh, someone doesn't need to, you know, in case they cough or sneeze or anything like that, you're still a good 18 inches away and getting an accurate temperature. We also have our temperature deviation correction. So this is for points throughout the day where it may be a little warmer or a little cooler outside. So if someone's coming in from in, during the morning in a cold environment, uh, you know during that time it's, they're going to be uh, a little cooler, so their body temperature is lower. So you can have this set to add a couple degrees to that overall temperature to compensate for that. And the same thing in the afternoon. If someone's sitting outside in the sun, it's the summer, uh, their body temperature is a little warmer, you can set it so that it subtracts a degree or two uh, to compensate for that as well. So another great feature that is becoming more and more prevalent now is our mass detection. So now I'm sure many of you know, you pretty much can't go anywhere without wearing a, uh, a mask right now of some type. So uh, any grocery stores you're trying to get into, I know I have to wear a mask. Uh, basically anywhere else you go, you got to wear a mask. And this was already the case in many types of industries, such as like uh, food processing, restaurants, uh, manufacturing, where People may be inhaling uh, some chemicals or anything like that. They have to wear their masks. So this is where that feature comes in handy uh, when it's not necessary for the uh, for our sickness screening or whatever it's being called or considered. So right now, I'll throw on my mask. I'll present myself to the reader. Normal temperature. As you can see. They can detect I'm wearing my mask. This is an N95 surgical mask. I don't know if it's a surgical mask, but it's the, it's the N95, the recommended mask, as you can see. I can come up again. Shows my mask is detected. It verifies my face by adjusting its algorithm to include the mask. My temperature is below the threshold, so it grants me access. Now, let's see what would happen if I present myself without a mask. So as you can see, even though my temperature was below the threshold, 
I verified my face, but I wasn't wearing my mask like I was supposed to, so it denied me access. And what I'm going to do, too, is someone put this pretty loud, so I'm just going to lower the volume a little bit. Save some ears. Save some ear drums this afternoon. We'll go back into the system, into our detection management, and I'll go over a couple other features we have. So, another make, big question we get asked a lot is, do I need to be enrolled on the device? Do I need to be registered in the software in order to still have these same functions performed? And that answer is no. You can simply be an unregistered user, have a visitor come in, a customer come in, someone off the street, still be able to walk up, have their temperature read, and then based on that, either grant or deny access. And they don't need to be enro uh, enrolled on the reader. So by simply clicking to allow unregistered people to access, we can do that. We also have the built-in capability of being able to take snapshots of everyone that's presented at the reader. This is for your auditing, uh, any type of reports that you need to have, uh, your contact tracing. Uh, if you need to know where someone was at some point, you need to have proof. You can have it by getting that picture taken, and then it's uploaded and reported to our software, which I'll show in a little bit. But when we do have the enabling of any kind of captures, what we do have here is a privacy agreement. So this is very important. It's so that all our customers, everyone knows that when it comes to data and privacy, ZK Techo does not collect any data. We do not store any data. We do not have access to any cloud data. We don't have a cloud function. We don't do or share anything. Uh, we don't share data because we don't collect it. All the data that's on these devices, all the data that's on the software, all live inside your network. Uh, so the readers are running in your network on your switches. The software is installed on your server inside your network. So we do not have access to it. The only time anyone from ZK would have access to it is if there's some type of issue and there needs to be troubleshooting and they contact our tech support engineers and then they would need to remote in simply using TeamViewer or whichever one they're using at the moment. And that would only be with the customer's consent. So that's the only time anyone from ZK would have any data from your issues and that's based on customer consent. So now what I'd like to share is our biosecurity software. So this is our biosecurity software. This is our enterprise level uh, access control uh, software. So from here, you can add our panels, our devices, our video cameras, uh, not just ours, any on this certified cameras, uh, are your elevator controllers for us. And also what we've done with the release of these readers is we've also added a temperature management module. So here, as you can see, we have a real-time monitoring. So here I'm able to see all my normal records in my real-time. Uh, if I have that capture enabled, I have it right there. Uh, it'll pop up here. And you have normal temperatures, anyone not wearing a mask when they should, as you can see here. We also have all our reporting here. So all of these are exportable via Excel or CSV file. We can have all our raw records. So this is everyone that's presented themselves, whether they're registered or not. So if you have the image captured, you're able to keep that there as well. We can even check by personnel on certain days. So if I wanted to see what Joe's temperature was on the 21st every time he checked in, I'm able to do that here and so on. You also have just your reports of just anyone that's above that threshold. You're able to get that. And even by department. And all of these are exportable and savable. Another great thing we've added is the ability to do all the same configuration you saw me do on the reader right from the software itself. So if you have several of these installed in a location, you don't need to have someone running up to each one to change a setting, uh, going back and forth every time you know, there needs to be a deviation change or anything like that. Everything can be done for each individual reader right here from the software. So as you can see, all the same parameters that are on that device are in here. You can enable your temperature screening, you can deny it, uh, you can you can set your threshold, do your deviation correction for those times during the day, enable mask or not, uh, allow unregistered people or not, and even trigger that external alarm. We've also added the ability to be able to send email notifications as well through linkage. So based on a high temperature or someone not wearing a mask, you are also able to send out an email linkage based on that as well. So 
in case someone's not on site, someone's not there watching the software, someone's not watching the reader or the door, wherever this is being deployed, you can still be able to have an email uh, sent out. I know a lot of people are interested in SMS, text messages, but these days uh, we choose not to send anything out over cellular. Uh, so just for data issues and, and data reasons like that. So with email, it's just the same. Everybody has email on their phones, just like everyone has texting on their phone. So you can still get that notification pop up in your email and still see it right from your phone. So uh, before I conclude, what I really want to do is also go over another point that's very important. So this is not a medical device, nor do we claim it to be. It does not provide any medical benefits. It does not stop the spread of uh, infectious disease. It does not stop COVID. It doesn't prevent epidemics or anything like that. All this simply does is just detect that person's body temperature at the moment that they're presenting at the reader. So whatever happens after that is something that these businesses, enterprises will need to have some type of standard operating procedure to follow. So kind of take it like into a, to a metal detector. So if someone comes, walks through a metal detector, it goes off. That doesn't necessarily mean that person has a gun or they have a knife or that they're a threat. It just means that they would usually have to step over and they'd be wanted by a security guard. And based on whatever their assessment is, then they would either be allowed or denied access. The same thing with this. So based on the settings that you have on this reader, if it goes off, uh, sorry, if it alarms, that means according to the settings you set, someone is above the temperature, they're not wearing their mask, then simply, you know, that business would have to have some type of a protocol. Do they have a nurse on site? I don't know, maybe, some places do. Do they have someone that's gonna be standing there with a handheld thermometer? Possibly. Uh, do they need to go uh, check in with HR? Same thing, possibly. So this is just something that every enterprise will need to have in, in place. Uh, there's no standard one uh, that was blanketed for everyone. Uh, we don't recommend anything. We don't have any idea because this is all business specific. So that's something that their department heads, their HR, their higher ups are all going to have to get together now and really just kind of formulate a plan on how to proceed. And this isn't just with our solution. This is with any type of temperature solution and with getting anyone to trust to go back into the workplace. They want to Customers, visitors, em employees, they want to make sure where they're going, they're going to feel safe. So that's something that all employers, businesses, all are going to have to have uh, a way to, con to, to handle that. All right, so with that, I'll throw it back either to Neil or if we want to open it up for questions, we can. Uh, I know we're starting to push it now. It's almost uh, uh, 22, so uh, it's up to you guys if you want to keep going or if we want to open for questions. I, I guess if, we, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. Oh, go that's ahead, what I was, yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, if you have more to show, you can certainly keep keep going. Um, but at any time, if anybody has questions, you can put it in the Q&A. Um, or, you know, if you would like to actually speak, just do the raise hand and we'll open up your mic, so. But if there's more, I mean, Esteban, if you still have more that you wanted to show, um, you can. I mean, Keep going. It's I mean, we you. can. There's a couple more. There's a couple more things we can go over. Uh, just kind of uh, when it comes to our product line and what else we offer regarding the temperature series. So uh, yeah, let me just pop that up. Okay. So there's a couple slides. We'll just skip over. Uh, this is just kind of explaining our regular visible light, how that works, and our predecessor to this reader, which was the SF1008 WP. Uh, which was outdoor waterproof. Uh, already had uh, won multiple awards as well for that. And here's just an example. You can see it. See this as you know uh, the predecessor with its outdoor solution. Uh, just it's just built into this pole. They come in. They recognize a barrier opens. They get access just like that. So a lot of it is what's next for us. Uh, Neil, you want to take this over? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. So we've added to our WMD 318 um, a thermal reader for body temperature that will either read the forehead or the wrist. Um, this device has an accuracy of plus or minus one degree Fahrenheit. And uh, 
really throws uh, two solutions into one here and uh, is, is a great opportunity, especially for schools and and uh, fairs. I've heard a lot of people talk about entertaining these for uh, for fairs and other things like that. But do note, it is an inside device. They would need some sort of air-conditioned tent or something, but uh, it's a great option. Next slide, please. One th one question that came in just as we're transitioning here, uh, David was asking if there's a certification class available. Yeah, so as of June 1, you will have to be certified in order to sell this product or any of our pro products. It's a two-hour interactive class with one of our um, secure with, with our, one of our engineers, uh, and uh, it's for as many people from your organization as you choose to have attend. It is uh, an annual fee that will renew on January uh, 1, 2000, or 2021, um, and uh, then we'll continue annually from there as well. And uh, that's what that's all about. And so just to clarify, so the certification is for the pro software, is that correct? Any pro product, that's correct. Yes, sir. Any pro product. So that would include the speed, any of the speed face devices. Correct. Okay. Okay. So um, we offer a visitor management solution incorporated with our speed face um, product. And uh, our visitor management product is very cool. It has some features that we don't believe anybody else has brought to the table. This has won multiple awards. Um, and it allows for uh, a lot of great things, including scanning of body temperature and mask compliance. Uh, it allows you to keep to maintain your social distancing um, and can be integrated directly with access control solutions, including our ZK Biosecurity um, software and Pro Series. So uh, it's a great option for a whole variety of different industries. Next slide, please. This right here, the FK1013 Plus, is uh, has the body temperature and mass detection capability in it, as well as it's a 13-inch self-standing unit that offers uh, a lot more than, than our other units. Uh, it does have QR barcode recognition, uh, ticket printing, and, and, and stuff like that as well, which is fantastic. Uh, it also is an Android platform we, along with our what we call EVK and uh, I, um, APIs, developers can actually integrate with this very easily and put workflow onto it to integrate the mass detection, facial identification or palm identification and mass detection um, right there in, in, in a solution. So I talk about as an example, let's say at, uh, well, let's say at the airport, you do check in to get your, um, a, a ticket or your, excuse me, your tag to put on your bags. Um, this could be incorporated with that and take your body temperature right then and there. Um, that, that's one thing it could do at, at a, uh, let's see, what do we call it? Oh, excuse me, convention centers. You could have it set up to get your, uh, your badge or identify that you're on site and, and ready to go get your badge. You could have it at a movie theater in order to get your ticket. You walk up and select your your movie, and at the same time, it's going to take your body temperature. So there's a lot of different things that can be done here. Uh, that the beauty is, it is Android and allows uh, developing te developing teams to be able to do those type of functions. Next slide, please. Oh, there we go. Okay. So um, access control software integration, I mentioned, um, it's in a, um, well, excuse me, back up. The speed face is interfaced with our ZK Biopack, which um, is being finalized right now with Linnell, Genetech, and 8Bag. And we also are interfacing with other applications as well to allow this um, pure integration without having to monitor or manage multiple databases. Next slide, please. Right, so, uh, yeah, oh, let me just speak to that a little more to make it a little clearer. Uh, so we're very close to being finished with the uh, Linnell integration, so that will be available shortly. Uh, we plan on still doing AMAG and possibly Genetech down the road. Uh, so one important thing is 
uh, a lot of these companies want us to automatically just write these. But the thing is, with the demand with these, uh, with the demand is we simply don't have a lot of time. So if you do have uh, any customers that are interested and they are currently using these systems, uh, please, please reach out to Genetech, AMAG, um, any other type of access control company that uh, you could see this working with, please let them know. We do have SDKs. We do have APIs. This could assist the uh, integration of these as well. I know if they get a little pushback from their customers saying, hey, we want this, they tend to work a little faster. So it doesn't just leave the whole burden on us to do. Uh, so please, if you have any, any uh, what is it, CQR, Software House, uh, Cantec, any other uh, third part, any uh, other access control company, uh, that you currently work with, uh, please reach out to them uh, and kind of uh, give them a kick in the uh, you know where to get to get this rolling. But as far as just regular out uh, regular existing access control without these integrations, this is just a weekend out. So you can have the weekend output output that person's card number to work with an existing access control system. Uh, you would have to enroll all the users. That is the downfall of it. Um, but there are ways you know to do it easier. Um, you can, you know, say export a CSV file or an Excel file of their database and then just import it into our template and just, you know, filter out the relevant fields and enter those in. Then you can upload. So that's another quick way to do it without a direct integration. <clears throat> so I just wanted to clear that up. Thank you, Joshua. And also another thing that we'll be working on is uh, not sure if everyone is familiar with it, but uh, OSDP, which is Open Supervised Device Protocol, uh, this is what's becoming the next industry standard uh, and looks to overtake Wiegand. Uh, it's going to take a little while for uh, Wiegand to go away, but OSDP is much more secure, as we all know how easily hackable Wiegand can be. So uh, that's coming down the line as for, uh, from us as well, too. Thank you. All right, so we open up questions um I, I think there was a question there uh oops i just lost it there we go there was a question here what is the time to scan and how many people per hour um okay so, we're, go ahead Esteban. Yeah. so the average it takes if the person is in the correct position is about one to two seconds to be verified with temperature mask face all of that at once um uh, people per hour so really it depends on the flow so I would say I would say you could easily probably do about I'd say easily 20 people in a minute uh, as long as everybody's you know following the right guidelines and standing exactly where they need to be uh, you can get about 20 people per minute so then you can just multiply that. But once again, I, I can't make any guarantees depending on how this is implemented out in the field. And again, we can have multiple readers um, side by side. Uh, one scenario would be the same way that grocery stores currently do uh, self-checkout. You got one individual managing multiple lanes or multiple cash registers. You could do the same thing here. One individual could be managing multiple lines that are all uh, funneled to individual uh, ZK um, scanners and with the red and green lights on them as Esteban showed or different solutions that could be added. Um, people could just keep, go through if somebody does get a red, red or yellow light, if that's what you choose to incorporate, um, that person could be pulled aside by that moderator and told the standard operating procedures. But again, that's a much prettier workflow than tackling somebody from a crowd. Who else got questions? There's 30 some odd people out there. There's got to be more questions. Okay. Uh, the information for attending class available on this website. Um, oh, is the information for attending the class? Um, no, but um, you can get that from your team at uh, HL Flake. They'll provide you the details with that, and then you'll contact one of our engineers to set up an appointment and they'll give you the appropriate forms. Hey, Neil. And, and, yes, oh, correct. Ahead, hey, so for a, if you're gonna use it as standalone and not with the software, 
you uh, still need the certification, correct? If you are purchasing this product, you must have the certification. Okay. Yes, we have people in Puerto Rico. Um, we have people in our office that represent the Puerto Rico area. And um, I know that uh, Jamie also has uh, contacts there as well. Next question. Great. And Neil, when did you say that uh, certification was required? By, J by June 1. Um, so you've got about uh, eight days or so to uh, get that completed, or they will not be able to sell the product. Hmm. Okay. When they come into us, when we see an order, we will check for a code. Right. So we have current stock on uh, both. Um, and remind us again, what are the two part numbers that, of the plus? The, the SF-1008 plus and the 1000-V plus. 2005. Okay. 2000, yeah, 1005. I'm sorry, did I say, I apologize. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have current stock on both of those two. Um, mm -hmm. Correct. And we are uh, we're go going to run an initial promotion at 10% off. Um, off of those devices nice. and really it's through the end of this month so prior to that june one date um so if anybody wants to uh you know get get one in your hands and, and kind of work with the first one uh we have a 10 percent offer for uh for right now that's great that's nice so, yeah. so so not just when it comes to also uh, being able to purchase uh, it's when you call our tech support uh team you will also be able you need to uh uh, prevent provide your uh, certification number as well for anyone that's going to be doing this okay understood yeah and we have uh, i know you've been sending out information about the certification process and so we will make that available to our customers um we'll put on our website uh in the blog section a post uh about the speed face and about the certification great great <laughs> Well, good, Brian. What do you got? No, I'm taking a note to uh, so we make sure we get the certification squared away. Anybody else in the audience have more questions for us? Well, it looks like there might be one more there. So, if they didn't make the June one deadline, uh, will they be able to certify before January one? Uh, yeah, well, you can certify any time. I mean, literally, people can certify up till you know d d December thirty first. The key is you still have to recertify on J one or for J one. So, yeah. Do you have a ballpark um, for the tablet? Do you mean price? If you mean price, the retail on the units, the um, eight inch is three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars retail. And the um, five inch is thirty one fifty uh, retail. As far as what you're being charged from HL Flake, that is completely between you and them. And this, these items are currently available on um, our website, hlflake.com, or you can go to internationalkeysupply.com and and see the pricing. Okay. Or you can reach out to your sales rep uh, and, and ask them. So. Any other questions from, uh, from the audience? Or if you'd like to raise your hand, um, if you have a question that maybe is a little, uh, that you'd rather not type out, just raise your hand and we'll open your mic. All right, well, I think we put a lot of people to sleep or something, but I hope some of you got some good stuff out of this. Um, again, we re we really appreciate uh, HL Flake putting this together um, and allowing uh, Esteban and I to present and share this information with you folks. And uh, if there's anything that uh, we at, at ZK Techo can help you with, feel free to reach out to myself. 
uh, or or my colleague my colleagues in sales, and we'll be happy to assist you. Great, yeah. Uh, thank you both, Neil and Esteban, for taking the time to be here today, and thank you for the information. This was, this was great. Um, so, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap this up. We're right at the hour mark, uh, and I'll just say. Um, Keep an eye out for other events. You can go to hlflake.com and look at the events tab or go to uh, internationalkeysupply.com and look at the events page. Um, and also we are posting these on YouTube. You can go to the HL Flake YouTube channel or the International Key Supply channel. Uh, thank you very much and everybody have a, have a great weekend. Thank you, take care. Thank you, Travis. Have a good one. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Brent. All right. Have a good one. Have a good one.